remove your hats and the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is over there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. that want to speak tonight so just a reminder that um, each individual has three minutes to speak um, and the duration according to policy is 30 minutes for total comments Gary Rick and the microphone's over there that's all right okay. I have a few questions on the so-called early retirement of Lisa Bly whose idea was it to have Lisa Bly retire who made that decision and why why Lisa Bly out of all the teachers at Sebastopol? It wasn't Lisa Bly. If she was thinking about retiring, she would have told someone. I don't think Lisa Bly even knew she was retiring. Why was the thought to have Lisa Bly retire even brought up? Is it an enrollment issue? Do we need to abolish a position? What is the reason? Shame on you, school board, for allowing this to happen. She's probably the best, one of the best teachers we have in this school. The board policy 0144.2. Board members must serve for the best interest of the students. Lisa Beery, this is for you. Members shall avoid all conflicts of interest. Members will support the employment of those persons best qualified to serve as school staff and insist on regular and impartial evaluations of all staff. That's all I have to say. Um, the only thing I'm going to let you know is that we have a policy that you cannot make statements that are personally directed at a board member. So just let you know about that. Um, I'll comment a little bit. And then I'll... We did reduce force in the elementary this year. The staff was notified in November that we we're going to go down one section. We have three currently uh, sections in fourth grade and fifth grade. The fifth graders are going to sixth grade and they'll go down to two. So in November, the staff was notified that we'd be going down one, one section of elementary school and one uh, teaching position there. January, February, March, and April, staffing for 2019 and 20 and personnel reduction in force were on the agendas at those times. No one from the community contacted any administrators or came to the board at those times to address those issues. So the board moved forward. They hit their timelines in regards to layoff notices and, and, and as far as uh, issuing contracts, those, those deadlines were met and at this time, Ms. Bly is retiring due to declining enrollment, and so there's no need for a layoff notice given, a final layoff notice. Wasn't, wasn't that a reason for the new school because en enrollment was increasing? That's a different topic, and that's not true. But that, that was really it shows on the records that you guys have gone up 12% in five years. I really doubt that that's not true in high enrollment. Well, okay, well, you're out of turn, but I can address that. UW Madison Applied laboratory studies did a 10-year study on our enrollment, and they're projecting us to decline in the next 10 years. So why the new school? Yeah. The quality of the current. I position. think that should be recalled. But that's two. That's two issues. So. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I, I will address myself. We did cons I did consult with my own personal attorney and the school attorney as to whether I needed to fully re recuse myself from the process. I wasn't involved in the process until it came to the school board for discussion and I didn't participate in the discussion. You were involved in the yeah. in the seniority uh, board Mr. Rupp, Mr. Rupp, you abolishing can't personally it. do that. Act ten actions to abolish seniority. Yeah, um Jody Pershelsky <coughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Jody and I'm a second term PTO member and parent to a second grader and a special needs kindergartner. Um, I understand that you guys do have a very tough decision 
to make due to the low enrollment, but I am asking that you reconsider Lisa Bly, um, removing Lisa Bly from the district. I was fortunate enough to work with Ms. Bly when my daughter entered first grade um, in 2017. Not only was my daughter academically behind <clears throat> coming out of kindergarten, but also emotionally guarded due to personal issues. Ms. Bly recognized this immediately and took action. She welcomed me into her classroom and allowed me to volunteer there daily, weekly, as often as I wanted. So I personally witnessed how she taught to each student's level, reassessing daily um, how she spoke respectfully and lovingly to these children. I learned that she was the president of the PTO, runs a turkey trot, creates the yearbooks, um, finds a way to recognize her fellow staff mates and volunteers. She works tirelessly for the school, the students, the families, and the community. And by the end of the year, my daughter was ahead of expectation in all academic areas. There were no, no concerns of her zoning out in the classroom, which had been a concern in kindergarten and now in second grade. Her personality blossomed and she became a confident little girl because of Mrs. Bly. Mrs. Bly even went out of her way as far as driving to Oshkosh for a special event that my daughter participated in just to give her a bouquet of flowers and a hug that said, I'm proud of you. She turned around and went back home to work on the farm. What teacher does that? And the answer is none. No other teacher does that. My daughter is not special. Mrs. Bly would do this for any of her students because she cares for all of them like, they're, like her own. Um, and I should mention that my daughter as a second grader is now behind academically again and in special services. I did request and planned on having Mrs. Bly for my son next year. She is the reason that we've stayed in this district. Um, and I'm also aware that the majority of students request Mrs. Bly um, every year and this year as well. Now, back to low enrollment and that being your reason, I want to give you an example of another thing that I do know for a fact. Um, there is a family who just pulled their child out with what, seven weeks left of school because Jody of 15 seconds. Of the underperforming staff member in a different classroom that does nothing extra that it's just very disappointing that you would choose someone who does 110% when there are teachers in this building that kids are leaving because of. Thank you. here to speak in favor of Lisa Bly, first grade teacher. I'm the soon-to-be stepmom of one of her students, and without Lisa, we don't know where we'd be today. Let me give you a little bit of backstory. My soon-to-be stepson has had speech issues since he began to talk. He was put into speech therapy early on. Some improvement came with this, but he is still very hard to understand for anyone who did not know him well. Throughout kindergarten, we felt that he was behind. However, time and time again, we're told by staff that he was on track and doing well. The summer before first grade, we decided to have him tested with Chris Bone, Door County Speech Therapy. He was diagnosed with dyslexia. Prior to this diagnosis, we had requested Lisa as his first grade teacher. Despite constant reassurance that he was doing well and in line with his class, we didn't believe it. After all, we were almost to the end of the school year and he didn't know his ABCs. He couldn't say them or write them, much less in order. This was alarming to us, and before speculation can be thrown, we were working with him at home as well. He entered first grade in Lisa's class, and that's when we finally had someone understanding what we were concerned about. Lisa was in contact with us from day one, expressing her concern of how far behind he was. At the beginning of the year, I volunteered in the classroom as much as I could, but as time went on and due to other job commitments I had, I was no longer able to dedicate the time in the classroom. Lisa still remained in contact with us. When he is with Andy and I, we work with him every night more than most probably have to work with their child. He gets one-on-one one -on -one help structured to him daily in Lisa's classroom. Not only does he, but many other children in her classroom. Lisa will be in contact with us morning, night, and many times throughout the day if needed. 
We pay for outside help through Door County Speech Therapy. Lisa works closely with Chris to accomplish our goal. Looking at his map testing just for reading, he started first grade in the 10th percentile. He's now up to the 57th. To us, that means taking a kid who didn't have a chance and giving him hope. He is determined to learn and do better. The motivation he has is phenomenal, but without the right tools and people, the motivation goes nowhere. We are fear fearful of the backward slide he will make next year with teachers who don't have the dedication to the students that Lisa has. We are by no means parents who expect the school to raise our kids and teach them everything they need to know in life, but we get a few hours a night. They have them all day. You show me another teacher who will show the dedication and individ individuality to each and every student in their room. When I heard that Lisa was being let go, I was shocked and angry. At what point did it become okay for someone's political agenda and personal vendetta Actually, against seconds. Lisa to outrank the children's education? If you are willing to get rid of, in my opinion, the best teacher at this school, do you even care about the students? I have always been proud to be a Sebastopol graduate. graduate. But the move you are making will hurt the school, the community, and ultimately the kids, which I thought were the priority here. Thank you, Ashley. Margie Stotts. Hi, I'm Margie Stotts. I did not complete my ed a degree in education, but have volunteered and worked with children for over 40 years from tutoring, coaching, Sunday school, 4-H, and other projects, most, uh, excuse me, mostly in conjunction with one of my grandchildren or children. I currently volunteer at Ms. Bly's first grade classroom where one of my grandsons is a student. Putting all personal opinions of Ms. Bly aside, this is what I have observed. I have been a volunteer tutor for well over 15 years, and after working with and observing several teachers, I consider Ms. Bly one of the best. I've seen her individualize students' work in order to push each student to do his or her own best. I've seen a highly motivated and caring teacher who takes and makes the extra time and effort to each and every one of her students so that they can achieve success both in the classroom and out. I know she works with parents to work out the best paths to help their children succeed in their educational careers. She works hard to give each student a strong foundation in which to build their educational careers. I know she does this because my grandson is one of those that is needed and needs an extra boost. Ms. Bly gives each volunteer written or verbal instructions on what she wants the volunteer to work on with the children, what her goals are, and asks for feedback so she can keep track of where they are and at what if there's any additional help that they may need. This past fall when I first started, I was amazed at the wide gap that there was in the levels all the children were at. They were everywhere from already reading books to having to learn the letters of the alphabet, let alone writing it. With classroom uh, this diversified, it's hard to teach and not lose two-thirds of the class. Ms. Bly has surrounded herself and her class with a wide variety of volunteers who many have extremely impressive resumes who dedicate their time to giving our precious children the boost they need to succeed. At times there are many as four helping out at the same time. As the year went on, it was exciting to see the strides and advances that each child made and how excited and proud she was with them at their achievements. I feel we'll be doing the future Sevastopol pioneers a great disservice if we were to lose a teacher of Ms. Bly's caliber. Thank you. Thank you Jason Mann. Hello. Uh, Jason Mann. Um, a little bit, um, I don't know many of you, some of you I do. Um, I grew up, um, went to Southern Door School, moved out of town for quite a bit. In 2006, when we moved back with our family, young family, we started looking at schools. Um, at that time, Sebastopol seriously was not even on my radar. Um, we settled in the city of Sturgeon Bay, um, actually only three blocks from uh, Sturgeon Bay School. Our children started off at St. Peter's and quickly we realized that we needed to make the next step and transition them into a, a full-time uh, school, nothing against St. Peter's. Um, we started looking at the schools and by looking at the schools, I mean we came and interviewed with each school all the way up to Gibraltar. Uh, my wife was pretty adamant that we would travel as far as we needed to go to 
educate our children. We were very impressed with Sevastopol at the time. Um, you know, we, we got a we got a tour. Uh, not only the veteran teachers who had been here many years, um, but all the, the new teachers and the new energy of the school. Uh, we really loved how everything was together. And the high school kids were with the younger kids, and just that synergy. Um, we started. We brought our three children um, here to Sevastopol. Um, it is. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly reminded why we've chosen uh, this school. Uh, the national awards are well known. Um, you know, I, I, I understand what it is as a board to make the tough decisions that you guys make. Um, none of this stuff is easy. I didn't really um, know much about what's going on with Ms. Bly, so I'm not going to get into the politics of all that. Um, the speakers before have pretty much, um, you know, said a lot about who Ms. Bly is and the type of teacher she is. Um, with that being said, um, my son is currently in her class. Uh, he is one of the students that um, I believe came in as a deficit. There's a lot of things that should have been caught earlier on. Um, we're very engaged as parents and we're trying to kind of work through these things. Um, staff has been great. Um, Ms. Bly has been great. Um, as soon as we had to go to outsource, outside resources and, and get diagnosis and get a plan of action. Um, you know, I'm having to spend a lot of money this summer willingly to bring my child up to a, a certain level and get him, you know, back on track. That's nothing to be said against Ms. Bly. She instantly, when we had this diagnosis, jumped into action, um, provided Please customized plans seconds. for him. Um, so all I, all I can say is I know you guys have some tough decisions in front of you, but we've gone through some real drastic changes here over the last few years with, with staff um, in the elementary and middle school. I just ask that you really consider this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Melissa and Lynn, are, are you signed up for your presentation? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Sorry. Um, this Watkins. Hi, I don't have anything planned and I don't usually come to these. Um, everybody's come up and said how wonderful Lisa Bly is, so I don't need to reiterate how amazing of a teacher she is. So I have more questions, I guess, than anything um, when it comes down to this. If we are having one enrollment, why did we hire teachers within the last couple of years, the extra teachers that we had? I only have three minutes, so answer. You talk about last year with the Yeah, we had, you guys hired teachers. Correct. So if we're low enrollment, why are you hiring teachers? That class needed some extra attention, and we got them the attention they needed. Now a year and a half later, they're back to where we think they're adequate. Well, you think they are, year. so you don't have the facts You'll never as know far for as sure. low enrollment. We won't know until they graduate and become adults and what kind of people they're going to be, but we think we have a better My job. second question comes down to why Lisa Bly? Why was her head on the chopping block? Out of all of the teachers, including the new ones that you just got last year and the year before, why Lisa Bly was she picked out of well, all like of them? Like I said at the beginning, that's a personnel issue, and we can't share individual facts with a lot a of personality person. issue? Personnel. As far as what? It's personnel, so it, the school board in the district cannot discuss an individual Because you guys personnel. don't get along with her, or I don't, like I said, I don't we, understand yeah, again, how we this We are is. not at liberty to speak, and when you said she was on the chopping block, the, the question would be, where did you hear that from? Because it didn't come from the board or myself. It's dark, do <laughs> Come on. Okay. Well, Everybody hears everything. On top okay. of that note, I do have a letter from an anonymous parent. To the members of the school board, okay. do you want to? It's right. You can't, and you can't report report to someone Why not? else because you're allowed three minutes to speak. On All right, well then I'll take it as my own. Okay. To the members of the school board, do unto others as you would want done to yourself. That is what I teach my children. Yet time and time again, I watch and listen to what happens in the school district. I realize I'm fighting an uphill battle. I want each of you to ask yourself and be honest with yourself: Have I been kind? Have I been fair? Have I been truthful? I'm not preparing this letter to help a teacher get her job back. I'm writing this as a parent to make sure you know how I feel. The community supports Lisa Bly. Why? The answer is simple. Anyone I ask, the answer always starts with, she's the best teacher I've ever met. Then they go on to say how kind, caring, considerate, honest, and humble she is. Lisa has always put the children first, has always taught each child individually to support their own needs, and goes above and beyond every day in every way. My goodness, she was prepared to give her own life to save our children's lives when we had the active threat in our school. Lisa Bly sounds pretty remarkable, right? Which leads us to a question of why. Why is our school board allowing this to happen? This community wants and deserves the truth. 
please, I ask you again to treat each other the same way you would want to be treated and practice what we teach. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jamie Steffen. <clears throat> to the Sebastopol School Board members, there are many, many things that I can go that go through my mind when I hear the name Lisa Bly. One is compassion. Compassion that she has for her students love, the love that she has for her students. Kindness, care, generosity, hope. I could go on and on with the words that Lisa has shown over the years as a teacher here at Sebastopol School. My son, who is now in third grade, was, was and still is getting bullied. But it all started in kindergarten. He was such a loving, kind-hearted little boy, leaving 4K. And when he entered kindergarten, he changed. He was angry. He cried for no reason. He was shutting himself off from the world. We finally got him to talk to us, and that is when we discovered that he was getting bullied by students that were older than him. We talked to his teacher. She did nothing. We talked to the principal at the time. She did nothing. It was a mess. Summer break finally arrived, and I requested he have Lisa Bly in February entering first grade. In a matter of a month or two, having Lisa as his first grade teacher, our son blossomed. He had confidence. He was taking down the wall that he built the year before. He was actually smiling and laughing again. It was the best thing we as parents could have seen. Lisa Bly cared enough. She built up his confidence. She loved our child like he was one of her own. Finding out that Lisa Bly is getting forced out of, forced out after many years of dedication to the school has not just angered me along with other parents, but it also says something about how the school board, the superintendent, and the administration is running this award-winning school and education. Our daughter is going to be entering kindergarten next year, and I'm so afraid that she is going to be left behind and fall through the cracks. You need to listen to this community and really look at what you would be doing if you let this amazing teacher go. Um, Ethan, somebody, somebody signed up, I don't know, no, not you. <laughs> it's for the presentation. Um, Bianca? She's also for their presentation. Bianca's a student. Jason Berry. Oh, Steve Gregerson. Steve Gregerson. Jorgensen. Oh, Jorgensen. Obviously, I'm here uh, in support of Lisa Bly, as everybody in the place is. Um, you talk about uh, overstaffing and get rid and um, overstaffing in fourth and fifth grade. Why do you pull a first grade teacher? What's the reason for that? And to be honest, the best teacher in this school makes no sense. Makes absolutely, absolutely no sense whatsoever. Um, I want to <clears throat> applaud the three out of seven members on the board that actually vote for the school, for the good of the school. Um, there's been a couple of uh, couple of elected here in the last year or whatever it was um, that seemed to have a problem thinking by themselves and uh, need to be told what to do. Um, you know, I guess I'm asking you to grow a set and uh, Sir, actually do what... Like uh, that. uh, that's out of line. That's out of line. But, but you can't. And uh, actually do what's good for the kids. You're here to put the best teachers in the classrooms, and obviously she is. Um, I don't care if anybody on this board, that, I, I don't care if anybody likes her. I don't care if there's a teacher in a place that doesn't like her. That doesn't matter. The fact is you're supposed to put, the, you're here to put the best teachers in the classroom. And she's the best, by far. 
so. So it is a personnel matter. If any of you have questions about the building process, I know Mr. Lukey would be happy to talk to you. If you have concerns regarding your child's education in other grades, I know Mr. Hiltz and Mr. Lukey would be happy to talk to you. Um, there was a lot of whys. When, we hired, when someone's hired, the administration goes through a process of determining the qualities of that person and what makes that person right for the job or not right for the job. And when we have to reduce staff, they, they have to go in the same process. They have a process in which they evaluate all of the qualities and determine what's best for the students. Lisa, why I know would that's, not be on top of that if that was the case? I know that's not what you want to hear, um, but talk to Mr. Luke and, and I Mr. Hiltz. I would hope that any teacher that was in the situation that some parents would come forward and say they're the best because we do have a good staff. We were satisfied with the performance of our staff. If you took it up with the community, none of us would agree. You had four board meetings that was on the agenda. You guys no are all secretive. Forward, so. Yeah, very and There's only certain things we're allowed to speak about when it comes to personnel. That's the rules and laws that, that govern us. You guys govern yourselves. Okay, thank you everyone for your comments. Exactly. Thank you everyone for your comments. We're going to move on to the presentations. The first one by the Robotics Club. Mr. Phillips. I'd like to introduce Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips, um, we, we have uh, we really wanted to include robotics as part of our curriculum. And I approached Mr. Phillips because he has a technical aptitude and asked him if he had any interest in creating a club or an organization um, to support our students' interest. And he jumped on it right away. Um, so much so that we're, we're seeking approval for the club tonight. However, Mr. Phillips has already um, gone and done a number of things to secure some resources for this club and get our kids started. And you can see by the participation that it's very uh, popular with students. The students give up their lunch time, they give up multiple opportunities throughout the day to come down and work with some of these tools. We hope to build this into our curriculum even more so that it's part of our instruction. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Okay, so uh, talking about the Computer and Robotics Club. Um, actually, you know, it's not a secret that you know STEM careers and technology careers are coming, are gonna be a big part of the future. Uh, and there's a shortage in those areas across Wisconsin and across the nation. So I'm not the only teacher that's looking for other ways that we can incorporate, you know, scientific and technological type of uh, areas into our curriculum. Um, with our school, it's kind of hard to add more classes, and especially in like computer science, where you have to be a whole department or whatever it is. Uh, so I've been looking for avenues to incorporate programming and that type of thing uh, with the robotics and the fab lab. Uh, kind of coming down the road, you know, the only thing different between a RC car and a robot is a robot has a computer on it. So computers and robotics, they really go hand in hand. Um, so kind of working on that. Uh, that was the reason I kind of started thinking about it, started working on it. Um, so after I talked to Mr. Bayer in the beginning of the year, kind of got the okay, uh, started thinking about ideas, what am I going to need? Well, if we're going to work on robots, we need tools, we need a place where we can have this stuff out. You can't just, we've been working on this, this competition robot that we have here for a couple months, or I'd say about a month. You don't get a lot done in 15 minutes a day. It goes kind of slow, okay? But that's what we've been working on. Um, but we needed somewhere to keep that open and out so that people don't mess with it and we have the tools available. Um, and what's a computer club without a computer and something to do? So I wrote a grant. I worked on getting some money so we could get some things. And one of the things we got, we got that awesome computer that's back there. Uh, we bought all the component parts <laughs> individually. And then uh, we built that as part of my PC class. And it's a powerful computer so that it can operate the virtual reality system that Jacob has over here. This is just the headset for it. Uh, but this is top of the line uh, HTC Vive Pro uh, reality system. I've had 
easily 250 kids have tried that in my room since I've got, since we've set that up. Bring it around so they can pick. They can come around in front of the yeah. table. Yeah. Don't yeah. hand it off. You can just pass it around. Yeah, let's pass it around. Okay. Pass it around. But to run that, you need to have a pretty powerful nice. computer. So that's how that kind of came about with the computer. You need a decent computer to be able to run that. Um, so that's all that. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. So far with that, I've had uh, by all my third graders in school have tried that. All the second graders, except for probably half of this Tate's class, still has to try it. All the sixth graders and all the seventh graders have tried the VR so far. And then a lot of high schoolers. So right now I have um, sign-up sheets for the resource hour, for my lunch period for high school and lunch period for middle school. So there's always somebody wanting to do that. Um, anyway, moving right along. So we were looking at what could we could do. One of the first things we wanted to kind of think about uh, was there's lots of robotics competitions out there and different kind of robotics programs. So we were looking at uh, one we had heard about called First Robotics and really didn't know anything about it. But I got some students together that over spring break, a Friday of spring break, I took a bunch of uh, about seven, seven students and we went down to Milwaukee. First we stopped at a place called Lab Midwest which does sell industrial robots. And so we looked at some of the stuff they had on display. And then we went to UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena and saw the first robotics competition that they were putting on there. That was their, I think it was a regional competition or state, I'm not sure what it was. But it was impressive. It was so impressive that I decided that that is not where we need to be. <laughs> because that was a very, uh, uh, <coughs> sure. they, they build these 120 pound robots. They have industrial sponsors. These robots must cost thousands of dollars. They were, had a way, they were in the 120 to 150 pound range. So these robots pretty much scared me out of that. I was like, well, that's not really what I was thinking about for, really for our school. Really? But what I did Seriously. find out while I was there, I got a, somewhere along the line, I found this little handout. And if you look inside the back cover, you'll see this little chart here, this little thing. It's really small and hard to read. But you can see the uh, different levels of competition. Maybe you've heard of the Lego challenges. So the first challenges are part of the Lego challenges. The first Lego Junior League is from grades kindergarten to four. Then you have the first Lego League is from grades four to eight. The first robotics challenge that we went to see was actually just high school. And then look at this other one, this first tech challenge. It's grades seven through 12. And instead of uh, building a robot from scratch, you build a robot from a, a set of parts. So they give you, a, you buy a competition kit and you have to build your robot out of that set of parts. So that makes it more entry level for us. And since uh, originally I was thinking mostly high school, but I had so many middle schoolers that were interested. And then this was seven through 12. So anyway, the first tech challenge is kind of what we would like to do um, as an annual, maybe go to a competition or, or something like that. Uh, the way they do their competitions is more like a basketball game. I would compare it to, you get each school builds one robot and then your team gets put on a team with other schools. And then those teams battle it out. And then they do a couple of double eliminations and then they kind of advance. And then the teams that end up being, so it's kind of luck and skill to end up at the top. And then, then that's how you move on. If you made it through all of that, and through all the winnings, and you happen to be on the good team, you would maybe go on to something down the road. They have some, they have national competition and stuff like that. <coughs> I doubt it would be a little while before we get to that point. But anyway, that's the deal with the first robotics. I, this is just some information on the first tech challenge, more specifically, because that's the one we're kind of looking at and interested in. So you can look at that at your leisure. So would that be a goal of yours for next year, to, to attend the first tech challenge? Yeah, And what is. month is that in? Well, on this thing here, I don't have an exact date on it yet, because it is in the fall. This one here on the second sheet, it says season overview. So it says May registration opens and September is the kickoff. October to February are your league and events. League events. November through March are your state and regional tournaments. And if, if you ended up going to championship, then that would be in April. This year they were done, the first robotics, they were part of that. Most of this happens in the fall. 
it will mostly be done by like January. We start right after September, and then we will be done in January. Around there. Where is it all held? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it varies. Most of it's in Wisconsin for the local and the regional. And then this year, the the national was in Detroit, Michigan. I still have a lot of learning to do on this, so yeah, I don't know everything about this first tech challenge. But are there like competitions like in Green Bay and Appleton and, you know, are there small local there ones? There are local to ones and you can set up competitions too. Right now we're just meeting at lunch. Uh, we're doing high school and middle school at lunch. Like I said, about 15 minutes a day we're working on the uh, robots. Um, other things we're thinking about doing are maybe a local, like just with our club, doing a, they want to do a, like a battle bot or, I don't know if you've seen on TV with the battle robots, battle it out. So something like that maybe. Uh, more field trips, we'll try to get some more field trips with manufacturing facilities that use robots. Um, guest speakers, presenters. So that's it. We just like to be officially recognized as a club and be able to move forward. Do the students have things they want to show us? I wanted to uh, yeah, point out a couple things. So and standing there with their stuff. So, let's so yeah. the robot that uh, Merrick is holding is uh, the, one of the robots that we got started with this year from TechEd. Mr. Simrall had ordered them, but they never got opened. They never got opened. And um, so he gave them to us, so that kind of got us started this year. That's a claw bot. Then um, this one here is actually part of our competition robot. This is from the competition kit for the first tech challenge. This one's a work in progress yet. We're still getting this one going. It interacts with two of those uh, more roller phones, actually do the communications and programming all through those. How do you operate that one? Oh, okay. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge Madison Lopez. Madison here has been like the main builder of the competition robot here. He's been coming in during her middle school lunch every day and working on it a little bit every day. And then Tyler, where's Tyler at? Tyler saved us this week trying to get the phones figured out. So he was very instrumental in that process. And uh, Jacob here, he comes in every morning and sets the VR up for me. And gets everything rolling and helps people when they can't see what else they're doing. So it gets to Great job. Yeah. And everybody else is kind of helps with the uh, Mr. Phillips, what would you say is your core number? Well, we're that that's participating now. The, the team can have up to 15 members. Okay. Registered members that can actually go to the competition as registered members. We can have more than that in the club. Right now, um, I would say. Jamie's kind of in and out. These are probably most of our, we have uh, Ezra probably two, and there's probably a few more. This is probably most of our group, probably added three or four. Okay. Or so. I'm really glad to see you doing this because uh, if you've seen the uh, Steam features on WLUK that CISA 7 is uh, sponsoring, and I we saw the list last night at the CISA meeting, and they were all, all Door County schools except Sebastopol, so I'm glad we're getting into this. They were all featured except us. That's part this of the robot thing? thing? Part of robots? Uh, any type of steam. Oh, project. Okay. Yes. But robots could certainly be that. I think Michigan might have been one that I saw with robots. So this is a presentation tonight. This will be coming back to us on a future board me meeting for consideration for approval. So if you have questions tonight, you can ask them, Dave. Maybe you'll, maybe You'll go home and think of questions, and you can forward them, and Mr. Goofy will yeah, absolutely. forward them to Dave Ask for answer questions. next time. This has a lot of the just the regular good information about the uh, the first tech challenge that we're interested in. I think that's the main thing. I would say the Dave biggest thing I would like to know about is more about the locations, because there's travel and how which yeah. then incurs expense. Well, like last year, yeah, all I know is about the UW Milwaukee one, and then the Michigan. I'd have to go to the <laughs> Well, and I think the, the, the club, and what I was going to say is the level of competition isn't the goal. It's preparing and the work and coming in early and the knowledge you gain. And getting if you win it all or you don't, you still learn a whole lot. 
And I know, like I mean, my son mentioned, he's been in your robotics lab, mm -hmm. and I know next year as much free time as he can find, he, you know, there's an interest and there's a growing interest. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, you know, to, the, to your point, there might be some decisions that maybe we can't afford every competition, you know, but um, I think overall recognizing as a club and encouraging student participation has been help a lot of us. Well, we would like to do, like to continue to write the grants like I've already been doing, and then so far everything's been grant funded. So. I'm, I'm pretty sure we could probably continue to find that money, but if we could do a fundraiser or two a year, I'm sure we would be fine. You know, maybe that'd be, if that'd we actually be so to national, we might need a little help. <laughs> 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 yeah, other than that, I think it would be, it'd be all right. That would be a great problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and grants and donations, Mr. Coles, because I right. you see a, our businesses stepping forward and saying these are the types of skills that our students need to have. Um, in fact, we did some presentations to community business or community business. Um, it was one of the things that they highlighted that, highlighted that was missing from our curriculum. And that's when I came back and I said, yep, you're right. And that's where the challenge really came from. So those things are happening. And we, we, um, the competition is great. Uh, the focus, though, is getting the equipment in the kids' hands so they can, they can go. And it, it draws them in there. Any other questions for Mr. Phillips or the students at this time? Well, then we'll see you back in a future meeting. Right. meeting. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I just wanted to say to, to Bianca and Lily and Ethan um, just how impressive your presentation was when I first was invited to see it before um, everyone here tonight. And I just wanted to say quickly thank you so much for the hard work that went into the presentation that's tonight. But most importantly, thank you so much for the message that you are bringing to ensure that all students at Sebastopol feel like they belong, they have a voice, they are accepted. Um, I just want you to know um, how proud I was to be able to listen to you um, last week, and I wish you the best of luck tonight, and you're going to knock them dead. So, thank you so much. Ethan and Lily for really helping me 
um, put this presentation all together. I wouldn't be at the spot that I am now without them. So thank you. Then I'd like to thank my advisors, um, Mrs. Malfour and Ms. Cotty, for kind of guiding us in the right direction and helping us get here today. So then lastly, I'd like to thank all of you guys for watching and supporting me. It really helps. Since I was young, I've heard people all around me tell me to be myself, to be proud of who I am, and not to let others get in my way. At the time, I didn't follow that advice. Why? Well, why should I be the one who everyone looks down on? Why should I be the one that everyone makes fun of? I mean, really, we are told to be ourselves, but then as soon as we leave social norms, we get criticized. As a scared, anxious little kid, that is not who I wanted to be. So I did my best to blend in, and I refused to think I was different from anyone else. Even when I did things deemed as weird, they were never too far-fetched or crazy. About <coughs> two years ago, I started to recognize that I wasn't just attracted to boys. I liked girls as well. I hated the idea of being like this. Kids constantly use homophobic slurs or phrases such as, oh, that's gay, or other more powerful words and phrases. I didn't want to be different. That is, until one of my friends came out to me, and then another. That's when I realized that there is a community of LGBTQ plus kids in our school. Eventually, I came out as well. I was aware of the existence of hate towards members of the LGBTQ plus community, but I thought that our school and its patrons would be more accepting based on the values our school teaches its students. I soon realized I was wrong. My peers constantly talk about my relationship in an overly sexualized way. They tell me that what I'm doing isn't normal, and they make assumptions on my personality based on my sexuality. The harassment over my sexual orientation has become extreme. For example, one day while riding the bus, a student said something that was so degrading, I feel that repeating it verbatim would be too shocking. Suffice it to say, the student told me that I should mutilate my body and that I should rid myself of the genitalia I have now because obviously liking girls means that I wanted to be a boy. I was outraged when these things happened, but I knew that this type of discrimination existed, so I blamed myself for bringing on this negativity. I wanted to make a difference, but what good could a kid like me do, especially when it comes to such a broad topic? One day, Mrs. Mulrain introduced an editorial project that we would be doing. We had to choose a controversial topic, and I knew what my paper would be about, LGBTQ plus rights. This is my opening, my chance to do good and spread awareness. By the time we actually started writing this paper, I had a burning passion for the subject. I did lots of research, and at one point, I had to schedule an interview. So I did one with my body. We talked for a while, and she told me about the many activists that she had known in her lifetime. She told me that one of them made a gay straight alliance in her old high school. That's when the thought hit me. Why don't we have one of these in our school? Many kids, many kids seem to be clueless when it comes to the LGBTQ plus community. And I think a lot of mixed feelings could be easily resolved with the help of a little bit of knowledge. This could be a great chance for us to not only bring those who are in the community themselves, but <coughs> allies or people who support us together. So I reached out to Ms. Malcor and presented the idea to my friends. Since the idea first came up, Ethan, Lily, and I, as a team, have been working very hard together to do some research and put some thought as to how our alliance, which will be called Saga, will be run. This is our presentation. So what is Saga? Saga stands for Sexuality and Gender Alliance. It is an organization with the goal not to only raise awareness, we also bring kindness and support to the LGBTQ plus community within our school. Everyone is welcome, LGBTQ plus people and their straight allies. SAGA will ensure that everyone who needs it has a safe place to express themselves securely within the school environment. We'll also work to make our school a more accepting place using education. We'll work together to empower those who feel powerless and help allies stick up for those being hurt.
Another thing we plan on doing is identifying these issues in the school and community in general and thinking of constructive solutions to them. We won't just work to spread awareness uh, to cut down bullying. We will also work together to help everyone be more comfortable with themselves. Why do we need Saga? We need Saga be because of the discrimination and hate towards the LGBTQ plus community that we see every day on buses, on, in hallways, and even our classrooms. Places where we have been told are safe to be our true selves end up being places where we now see that as a lie. When this first became an idea, there was a co topic of concern that I was troubled with. Would I, a straight ally, also be discriminated for supporting this community? Then I thought, this is what we're trying to fix. We need an educated support system so that everyone feels safe. This organization will not only help members of the LGBT plus community, but also allies who want to support people on the spectrum without feeling like they'll be, they'll be made fun of as well. If allies such as myself have opportunities to, to support this community, we would definitely be more likely to take them. SAGA also provides great leadership opportunities for those who may not find interest in other existing school-based organizations. It's a good opportunity for those who just want to actively contribute to the LGBTQ plus community as well. The statistics that go with the bigotry and hate against LGBTQ plus people are alarming. Three out of ten kids under this category commit suicide every year. This makes me look around at my friends and wonder if any of them could ever be reduced to only a number in a mental health magazine. There's been an in a recent increase in cases relating to mental health issues among teenagers, anxiety, depression, and even suicide. Many of our existing school organizations are currently focused on how they can benefit people suffering from mental health disorders. However, something that isn't talked about is how prevalent these said disorders are with the LGBTQ plus students who don't feel like they're represented in their school environment. Having this club will not only bring awareness to students, but also provide students suffering from mental health problems with support. So what will SAGA look like? SAGA is a completely run, student-run organization that offers positions such as treasurer, secretary, officer, and more that provide both leadership skills and learning opportunities. SAGA will be meeting at least twice a month and will have meetings for both the entire group and just for its main officers. SAGA will also take part in fundraising events and will work towards bringing, a, bringing means of LGBTQ plus education to the school system, such as educated speakers. When problems arise, there have to be long-term solutions, especially when it comes to the safety of our friends and family. With the help of Saga, we will provide solutions to accomplish our goal of making school a safer environment for everyone. Thank you. And now I would like to invite our two advisors to speak. all three of you for that wonderful, wonderful speech. Hello, I'm Lynn Cotty, a middle school science teacher here at Scott School. Um, Lissa Malcor and I have been asked by these three students to be advisors to Saga here at Sevastopol. As advisors to Saga, our roles would include the following. One, to provide and identify regular opportunities for skill building, for skill, yes, yeah, skill building, leadership, and learning. Two, help students learn how to navigate the ins and outs of the school system in terms of laws and policies and to serve as liaison between faculty and SAGA. And three, to encourage student leaders in their ideas, goals, and support them in their scheduled meetings. So SAGA is really a student-run group, student-led, so we will be supporting them in their ideas and their leadership. We will be helping them figure out how they want to run their meetings, set their agendas, and decide which issues are important to them and how to tackle those issues. Um, we hope to instill a sense of skill and confidence in their roles. We want to help them think critically, run their club, and plan effectively. With the addition to Saga, um, we hope to help them learn how to deal with their concerns and 
make change effectively. With the addition of Saga to Spass Pool, we are working towards accomplishing goal of trying to make our school a safer environment for every student. Thank you. Is that the end of the presentation? Okay, then we'll open it to that for questions to the advisors or the students. <coughs> I would just like to commend all of you on your efforts and the excellent, excellent presentation. It was fabulous. It really was. And I would also like to offer, uh, I was fortunate when I worked in Green Bay to have two people on my staff who have done some excellent work throughout the state and this whole area, uh, particularly with uh, the Gay Straight Alliance and who's getting them started in schools. And when I mentioned to them this was on our agenda, they offered their help to be resources, and they also identified another person in uh, Green Bay who uh, is at East High School who would be more than happy to help too, because they have been through this process uh, for several years and uh, would be more than happy to offer any suggestions or answer any questions or uh, provide resources. Is this a national organization, or is this something you're developing on your own? Is, um, is Saga a, a, an existence already? So GSA is a national organization. Recently, it has really transformed into more of a Saga. More schools are going to that just because it's a more inclusive term. Um, we got most of our information for this club from national resources and from state um, resource called GSAFE that works with these groups specifically. What grade levels are you looking to include? Like how, how middle school, high school, or younger, or what are you thinking? Um, I was kind of hoping to include all of middle school, but I think at the very least I'd like to include eighth grade throughout high school. Okay. Is that how the whole group kind of? Yep. Okay. And then you mentioned fundraising, and then you mentioned guest speakers. Would the fundraising be to bring in those guest speakers? Um, the fundraising would be for many things, but yes, that would be one okay. part of Tell it. Tell me what many other things would be other events to go to or, or yes, there conferences are. or There are expand. LGBTQ plus um, leadership groups in places such as um, UWGB uh, where they go there for, I think it's just a few days, and they're taught ways to deal with anxiety and depression and just kind of what comes at the community. Cool. They're also teaching them during these meetings um, how to run a successful GSA and a long-term GSA. Um, there are bi-yearly meetings that we've found that meet around the state for students. Again, it's kind of a mini conference every semester where students, again, can learn how to have a successful and productive group. Mm -hmm. Any other questions at this time? If there aren't, again, this will be coming back to us on a future agenda. For approval, so if you have, if you think of questions, get them to Mr. Luke, and you can um, get them to the group. So I guess we'll see you back here in a future month. I would hope that both of these we could bring them back at the next meeting, so that we have the momentum going to keep it going and not have to wait. I'll ask the advisors if June works for them and their kids, because. Yeah. <laughs> so someone might be on it, you know, but yeah, they, they, that's not a problem, but it's a, if the advisors and the majority of their kids are available, that's not a problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any board members wish to have removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none, then the consent agenda is approved by a consent including the MFC Foundation, $1,500 for Destination Imagination, Gendu Petroleum, $461.50 for the Music Department, the Culver's donation of $1,039.80 for the fifth grade Trees for Tomorrow trip, the Jackson Port Advancement. Corporation, $500 to Destination Imagination, and the Friends of Gibraltar, 
$4,667 for the challenge day 2019, which I think was back in September. No, this no. is for next year. Oh, 2019. Yeah. Okay, so the consent agenda is approved by consent. We'll move to the administrator's reports then. Ms. Margraff? Happily to start. Um, I, the, what I, I wanted to highlight two things um, this month. The first one is, you know, I just wanted to wrap up the first year of Stride and let you know how successful it was for, I would say, the majority, well, all of the Door County schools. The collaborative, and I've, I know I've spoken on it a couple of times, but, uh, you know, I get the opportunity to go and um, go to month, well, not even monthly, I guess. Twice a month we meet. And it's wildly successful. All of the schools are happy, and I just wanted the board to know that since we had started Stride, that there had been there have been 66 counseling visits for our students. And when you think about that, and you think about there was only seven kids being consistently seen and one offsite being consistently seen, the impact that it's having on our kids is significant. So um, I just wanted you to know that that final number, and also. I wanted to say just thank you to you know Sue and to Cindy for all the work that you did to get that momentum going and that grant written because it has been submitted again and we are anxiously awaiting to see if it gets approved again so we can continue this incredible um, opportunity for our kids. So it's been really fantastic. And the other exciting news is in summer enrichment, we're up to 144 students. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, you know? <laughs> Every time I give more names to rock. <laughs> but, you know, it's just such a great, it's a great problem to have, and there's such enthusiasm, and the, I can't say enough about the staff and the support staff that are working so hard to make this an amazing summer um, experience for our kids. So um, I'm really looking forward to this summer, and I know the kids are too. So that's all I have to add. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hiltz? Um, to start off with, I can't believe that we are this far into the year. Um, it just seems like it is going so fast. There's still so much to try and get in. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I'd like to highlight is something that I haven't yet experienced here, but uh, we're excited about putting it together is the last Friday of school. Uh, we're going to do, I know that in the past there's been a track kind of um, event day, that kind of thing. We're going to do kind of a take on that, but we're going to do more of a field day. Uh, with a variety of different activities, not just uh, track. Um, <clears throat> but with that, we're also going to expand that to things that are going to happen over the course of the week. We're going to have um, all of the kids and all the grades divided into th uh, four teams, and this will give uh, the kids an opportunity to cheer for each other across the grade levels um, and uh, compete a little bit. Some of the competition will happen in the classrooms, so the kids won't have to just be athletically inclined in order to be successful. Uh, they'll have different challenges each day. Those points will be tallied, and then um, we'll announce those at the end of each day so the kids can kind of see where their team is going. Um, and then on the, that Friday, we'll have an assembly, a picnic, and then we'll finish that up with uh, field events, and uh, including relay races and, and those kinds of things, and tally up those scores. But uh, really making that last full week uh, something exciting for the kids and uh, try and keep their focus a little bit. Uh, to tie in with that, one of the things that we're going to do with the suggestion of Mrs. Sheehan is uh, uh, incorporating the uh, PBIS tickets. Um, you know, we've done some pride tickets with the kids. Uh, we don't formally have PBIS in place yet, but um, we do give tickets out to the kids for doing big things and to maintain their behavior that week. Um, teachers will give the opportunity to get those tickets and then the kids can put those tickets in containers that will be in each of the classrooms for their team's color. And we'll add those things up and the kids that uh, get more tickets so they'll be adding more points to their team. So we're hoping that that will have a positive benefit on, um, again, keeping everybody's focus and uh, their behavior for that last week. So we're really looking forward to that. Thank you. Mr. Bear. Thank you. My, my report really highlights all the celebrations that take place this time of the year in order to recognize our students. And there are many things happening from high school graduation, senior awards, middle school graduation, middle school awards, eighth grade class trip, senior outing, casino night, um, there's just so many things happening in our community and this is all a result of our faculty so we had a chance to celebrate them as well with uh, faculty appreciation week and that week was outstanding um, administrative assistant day all of those things that bring us together as a school and make us a wonderful place to be um, but saying that those are all adult driven activities today we saw a few student driven activities which is really remarkable um, but even then um, I, 
I just had this experience about a month ago, and I want to talk a little bit about Simon's Carnival. Um, because that came to be because we had some seniors that came to me and said, we'd like to do something great. We'd like to do something special. We'd like to give back to our school. Um, we problem solved, or we brainstormed for a little while, and we came up with Simon's Car Carnival. Um, our seniors would like to host a carnival for all of our elementary students on J uh, June 10th. Invite them over, bouncy houses, petting zoo, um, snacks, things for them to enjoy. Um, but really it's about bringing our community together to recognize Ms. Simons, who's been a parent to all of our kids. Somebody that even our seniors will remember um, her generosity and her kindness and how she greets everybody each day. Um, so we've invited the Simons family to be a, a guest at that. Ms. Simons is hopefully going to be able to join us. And we're going to finish that afternoon then with a community um, event as well in our recognition. So it's really nice that we do these things to celebrate, but then our kids recognize that, and then they bring forward these opportunities and we have things like uh, uh, Carnival from this assignment that invites our elementary students to be part of that. So I'm really uh, appreciative of our student class and leadership that they're offering up to the last week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had strategic planning on uh, Wednesday. Aaron Malzuski from CISA 7 was out here. He helped train Mr. Bear and Ms. Ms. Shenkine because they were busy working the other time. He came up and trained the other uh, action team leaders. Uh, this coming Thursday, May 23rd, we'll have a staff meeting with the aides and the teachers where Aaron will catch us up to speed on the strategic planning up to this date. And then he'll explain the concept of uh, the core and advisory committees that are going to help accomplish the action team goals. And we're going to start that process. Uh, the action team leaders kind of have an idea of some people that they like on their team. We want people to volunteer in areas where they feel like they have uh, passion. And we want them to be on teams where we think they have some skill set that's going to be helpful. The Eco Lab we have over on Dunn Road. Last year, a couple of our teachers spent some time clearing off the pathways because it's been neglected over the last few years. The second grade team has taken it upon themselves to start that initiative again. They're working with the high, the high school and middle school science teachers. They're going to have a few extra days here of cleaning brush, and basically, they're going to have the adults with chainsaws and some of our own children carrying the, br the brush away. Uh, we've added some signage to it so you know where the two loops are. Um, it's 71 acres total over there, and we've been underutilizing it, so we're going to start picking it up. And they want to have a brand new grand opening for it on June 15th. And one other portion is there's a gate over there currently that's not functioning correctly, and they want to know if that gate can be removed or not. So sometime Rock and I will go look at the gate. Um, when you came in tonight, you maybe noticed the people working on the doors. They were putting the safety film glass on. They're supposed to do that tomorrow, but they came today early, so that's good. That is from the first round of the Department of Justice Safety Grant. Um, that was awarded last summer, and they had such a backlog on schools waiting for the film to be installed that we're finally getting ours now, so that's good. And on Monday, uh, Sheriff Sternard and Officer Hilselbeck, who's going to be our SRO, showed up to our administrative team meeting. The SRO is going to be using Core Matter Projects curriculum for fourth graders with a follow-up curriculum in seventh grade. In order for that to be taught at our school, it is co-taught. So Allison Newman has agreed to go to training this summer to become certified in Core Matters Project. Just because the curriculum's in fourth grade and seventh grade, it doesn't mean he's going to be limited to visiting those two classrooms. He's going to visit all the classrooms, and we're going to gear that based on our needs here at each grade level. But the focus will be fourth and seventh so that they get that particular curriculum at that time. So that's moving forward. Great. Questions for Mr. Luke Those? None. Um, we'll move to the core planning team update, which met today. Like uh, sure, we also had May 2nd, so we've had two meetings. Oh, yeah, we have had And had I'm trying to think what May 2nd we discussed that day. Today it was Tech Ed and Agriculture. It was uh, Career flooring. Center. <laughs> Lots of flooring. Flooring was huge. Um, <laughs> library, and elementary library was today. Elementary library, and so was <laughs> um, <laughs> interior design, which I know nothing about. So, yeah, it was quite informative. Um, Kara Hutchinson and Jessica Killenberg are helping out with the color pattern and interior design portion. They 
seem like they really were in concept with the interior designer from Bray. I think when they go home, after all the colors and patterns and options, they're going to have a lot of time to think here, and they're going to come back with more ideas. And there's going to be. I saw Jessica taking pictures. Oh yeah, it, it, it's it's it was great. So it was good. Um, I think what else? The next meeting is May 30th, and the topics are site development and electrical. Uh, the electrical, just a little update on that from the, this is the May 2nd meeting. The new electrical room will be the small storage room between the two science rooms over here in the 1965 portion. So just out in this parking lot will be where the generator will sit and the big electrical box. Currently, the electrical panels and such are in the back of the kitchen. Somehow they're going to connect the new in the room between the two science rooms into that kitchen underneath the flooring, I believe. The kitchen staff will lose about a third to half of the back of their kitchen, which they use mainly for storage of dry goods. Well, and that's February, that's the first step in the process. And the science teachers will lose access to that room that they are storing their chemicals in. Some of the supplies can go in the classroom. Some of the chemicals cannot be stored in the classroom. So we're going to use Carrie Rentmeister's Spanish room next year. We're going to divide it into three sections. One for a little office space for Carrie to have a home base. A small area for the chemicals that are not allowed to be stored with near students. Rock and his crew will have to make a dividing wall to keep that separate. They're going to have to order a couple of cabinets for flammable and corrosive products and move that stuff in there. The reason they have to do that over the summer is because before February, all the cabinets and plumbing in that current science storage room have got to come out, including the flooring, which is from 1965, half the floor is from 1965. So that'll have to be abated when kids aren't in the building probably over Christmas break. So it's, that's the first inconvenience we're going to have around here. Yeah. I think it's safe to say we're getting down to the final design at this point. Getting close. Yes, and Bray will come to the June meeting with a PowerPoint presentation, and most of us <coughs> have seen the 3D design one. I think that's the one they'll show us. But it's mm -hmm. moved quite a lot. Yeah. yeah, Flynn said he feels real good where we are, and Andre from Myron told me today our budget looks good. <laughs> There was no change from May 2nd to May 16th in the budget line, so because we always get an update every meeting, so that was good. So, um, communications committee. Well, uh, we will be meeting again June 2nd. Um, our last meeting, you know, we were working, we, you know, a lot of times our main focus is the Pioneer Times, of course, because that takes a lot of time. And we back to doing it four times a year, which is great because we had it for a long time. Um, you know, it's always updates with the style book, social media, with the help of Stephen, website, things like that. It's always just all of those items are always a continuous work in progress. We're going to get one more meeting in just before school gets out because it's easier to meet during the school year than well, I mean, we'll have to meet during the summer as well. And we're going to work a little bit on this next meeting talking about what's going to be coming in the future editions. So, hey, um, meet and confer. Yep. Okay, yeah, meet and confer. We met on May 8th. There was a list developed, and I shared the minutes in the packet. Yeah, so you can see the list of concerns they have uh, that came out. It was good discussion. We're going to meet quarterly, and some of the items are handbook items, so they'll come forward in the future. I emailed it out to the entire staff this last week. I have not received any feedback from staff on questions, but I did refer them to the person that represents their area. We have a elementary teacher, middle school teacher, high school teacher, uh, cook, custodian, bus driver, I'm missing someone, I'm missing. aides. Yes. Yeah, every, every department's represented there, so I said, if you have a question on one of the items, go see the person from your department to come see me. So, um, yeah, so that's the list we have to work from. Yeah, so I think it's a it's a work in progress, but it was a good. Did you have another date set? 
Do we pick a day? Mm -hmm. I don't remember picking a day. I don't remember picking we a day. We said quarterly, I know that, but I don't think we picked the next day. It does say in the notes another meeting needs to be scheduled for. Well, that was that was April. That was okay. It happened in May. May eighth was the last one since the last board meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. I think it says quarterly at the bottom. Maybe it was through the minutes. Well, I, think I said I was going to send the minutes off this week to. after the people on the committee got an opportunity to read them, and which they did, and I haven't got feedback since oh, then. A lot of those items on the list were um, almost admitted decisions that would be made at the administrative level. Lights, you know, light uh, cameras on the bus and things. I think the one of the biggest things they wanted to talk about was the cap classes and how those people might be uh, paid to get their master's degrees, which they require. Will require. But which are required for them to teach. Okay. I don't have really any report. I've been to a lot of stuff, but I do have the student council report. It's another busy night of track baseball and softball. The Student Council is hoping to acquire the television is currently in the lunchroom. We hope to move it to the front entrance, entrance to be a display for announcements, upcoming events, athletic info, etc. We have talked to Mr. T to see if he can lead us in the right direction on how to operate it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your gold chains? <laughs> the, um, the students inquired about, and these are just topics, <coughs> topics of discussion, I guess. They inquired about getting student ID cards, and they are discussing student schedules and had a discussion about study halls, AP classes, weighted grades, and preparing for college while in high school. That's that report. Budget. The budget. Budget. Last week we had a working session for the budget for wrap, uh, wrapping up 1819 and for building 1920, and so there's been no change since last Wednesday. Anything to report for facilities? Rock is working diligently on the uh, gymnasium at this point with the bids and working with those folks. And the electrical one put another project on his summer schedule. And yeah, cafeteria is moving forward too, so it keeps making progress. Like anything that you want to talk about, Sue? Oh, yes. A lot going on with the state budget, of course. Um, Governor Evers' budget, uh, particularly in the area of education, which is what I've been focused on, has been pretty much stripped by the Joint Finance Committee. But uh, that doesn't mean we're giving up. We're fighting the good fight. This morning I uh, was involved in a conference call with the Fair Aid Coalition Board, and that group is guardedly optimistic regarding the $1,000 minimum aid per student, which would result in approximately $557,000 for our district, which would be wonderful. Uh, this was, there was uh, legislation introduced by Representative Merceau to the Joint Finance Committee, and I'm happy to report that it was supported by our Representative Kitchens. In the past, he has not always been supportive of that, but he has signed on now, and at least 10 other legislators have also signed on. Yesterday, I spoke with uh, the chief of staff in uh, Senator Jock's office. While he could not commit to anything, uh, obviously, he's not the senator, but he was very willing to listen to what I had to say and uh, asked if. Uh, Senator Jack could call me if he wanted more information. I said that would be wonderful. So uh, there's good things going on with that and uh, lots of people interested in it now who were not interested before. Some of the Joint Finance Committee members are talking about inflationary level increases only for public schools. That's not what we're looking for, but we need to continue to educate those people. Some items that have been excluded from budget consideration at this point 
was the levy credits moved to equalization aid, which is good for us because we don't get the equalization aid. So all my sources say that's off the table right now. Uh, what else is off the table at this point is private school choice caps and limitations, which uh, is not so good because that for us as public schools because that means more money is going into those private school areas. Uh, WASB has sent a letter to the Joint Finance Committee supporting raising the revenue limits in accord with the CPI, increases in special ed funding, uh, mental health initiatives, English learner funding, and gifted and talented along with some other areas. Uh, it's important that we continue to contact our legislators, and I know Melissa is very interested in this, and we also have a volunteer that uh, Kyle recruited who is uh, interested in providing some support and I have uh, agreed to meet with him as soon as he's available and Melissa's going to meet with us too and we're going to work on some uh, letters and support to legislators for the kinds of things that we need here at Sebastopol. So I think that will be a good effort if we can recruit any other people, particularly non-educators, because this is going to carry more weight. And I think you heard the message loud and clear at the, this uh, the uh, people services meeting that we really need to fight uh, for what we need. I will be attending the Wisconsin Policy Forum in Madison uh, next week on behalf of WASB. And that presentation will explore the state of education in Wisconsin as framed by the governor's budget proposal. There will be presentations by a panel of education experts and leaders, so that will provide some additional information. But uh, anything we can do to continue to fight the good fight uh, for this. And it's going to be a long fight from what I'm hearing. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have a budget very soon. So, more to follow. Thank you. Okay, we will move to old business then. And these are um, <coughs> second readings of policies that we looked at in the previous month. Um, the board has received them again to review. So, I will look for a motion to approve those first three policies under conflict of interest. I will move to approve policy 1130. Three zero three two three zero four two three zero conflict of interest. A second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, motion to approve the job descriptions policy. I move to approve policy one four zero zero job descriptions. Second. second. Uh, questions or discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, motion for the three employee anti-harassment policies. Move, move to approve the second reading of 1662, 3362, 4362 employee anti-harassment. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Motion carried. Um, the non-discrimination non and access to equal employment opportunity policy. Move to approve policy, second reading policy 2260, non-discrimination and access to equal educational opportunity. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, religion in the curriculum. Move to approve second reading of policy 2270, religion in the curriculum. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. School performance report. I'll make a motion to approve policy 2700.01, school performance report. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Employment of professional <coughs> staff. I'll move to approve policy, the second rating of policy 3120, employment of professional staff. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, then we have a second reading of a new policy, education for employment. 
move to approve policy, second reading policy 2420, education for employment. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We'll move to new business with action on the student handbooks. Does anyone have questions for on those for the principals? Have anything the you want to highlight? Editorial, uh, the score is an admin thing. The formatting is off on the uh, weighted grades thing. So just before you go final on it. Oh, um, A, B, C, D doesn't line up with 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 5. That, would, that was uh, yep, nope, just minor, using yeah. the side comments that. Yep, no, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. got it. And I think in the, yeah, element, in the elementary, it had something about the, um, the, the officers. It has the old officers from last year. And also on elementary on page seven, I think this is an error. It says students arriving to school between 706 and 810 mm -hmm. will receive a tardy. I think it's okay. Or not to be, but I mean, no, it's true. like. No, it's going to be a Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. We see, we really, we really need these things. <laughs> 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 We've got our homework. Anything so. else from anyone? That, well, that was for Aaron. Um, for Adam. The one thing I had under um, disciplinary, I was concerned because fireworks were, uh, abusive language was held to a higher, harder level than fireworks. And I just found that, personally, I thought that was odd because fireworks can, you know, uh, kill somebody. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to get to that. I apologize. Um, Let's try page 21. Yeah, so under violations against school administrative procedures, fireworks, the maximum action is suspension and police citation, but yet we have abusive language, maximum action, suspension, expulsion, and police citation. I think that needs to be addressed. I know words can hurt, but um, yeah. Fireworks one has existed in a long time. I've never seen an issue with fireworks. So right. It's but I'm just. Those things that's right. Been on but now it's like I happened, ironically, was watching a television show yesterday and people were playing with Roman candles. Mm -hmm. So. You never know. Yeah, you never know. So I'm just saying <coughs> if something were to happen, our maximum is probably not strong enough. Either, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Could I revisit Do that piece and make an adjustment? Yeah, and that'd be acceptable. Or, <coughs> no, it's a working I, document I would just propose right that, now. I would just propose that we have the same maximum action for fireworks as we do for use of English, which then gives us that range of consequences that we do. Mm -hmm. um, if there aren't any other questions or comment, questions from the board, comments from the administrators? Can I make one more? I sure. didn't include the clubs and organizations that were discussed today in this, this meeting. Um, Per the nice printed handbook that we make, it is due for printing on May 22nd. So I would submit this document for printing. Um, if then it wasn't approved in, in June, I would have to try to contact the printing company hoping that they could pull that out and or make an addition with the distribute uh, when we distribute it and have to make that adjustment if that's okay. I think that's the way he should proceed. Yeah, that's good for the printers, that's good for printers. Mm -hmm. It has to get me printers, so. Yeah, we're okay with that. Or, we do I mean, include I could, it, uh, and then we can always, I mean, it can always You can always add it because there's something else that might change, too. Right? I mean, it's, I mean a, it's a working document. Right. So. I don't necessarily, we would have, you, we can have a club without it, it here, being in the handbook. Yeah, if you prove it here now, you could have it without it and then tell the students first day of school these are now in there as well. So you're proposing to take it. the two clubs out of this printing? And, and then in June, if it gets approved, the next day call the printer and say, can you put this in? If they say no, okay, it's no different than if they couldn't take it out. So it doesn't mean we don't right, have you could do it. It's just right. Yeah, you do an insert. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay, um, is there a motion then to approve the elementary student handbook? 
Move to approve the elementary student handbook. Second. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And then motion to approve the middle school, high school handbook. I make a motion to approve the middle school, high school student handbook. Second. Questions or discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Um, then we have the first reading of some policies, and for the benefit of anyone watching online, the board gets these ahead of time so that we can read through them and pose questions. Um, and we do a first reading here, and then they will come back in a future month for final approval. So can I hear a motion for the non-discrimination non and equal employment opportunity policies? I move the... Uh to approve the first reading of policies 3122 and 4122, non-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. Second. Any questions or discussion on that one? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Staff discipline. I make a motion to approve policy, first reading of policy 3139, staff discipline. Is there a second? Second. Um, questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Termination, non renewal, and resignation. Move to approve first reading of policy 3140. Termination, non renewal, and resignation. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Eligibility of resident, non resident students. Move to approve policy 5111, uh, eligibility of resident and non-resident students. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Open enrollment program interdistrict. Move to approve policy 5113, first reading open enrollment program interdistrict. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Non-immigrant students and visitor programs. I make a motion to approve policy 5114, non-immigrant students and visitor programs. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Emergency medical authorization. Make a motion to approve policy 5341, emergency medical authorization. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Motion carried. Um, use of tobacco by students. Move to approve first reading policy 5512, use of tobacco by students. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Student anti-harassment. I make a motion to approve the first reading of policy 5517, student anti-harassment. Second. <coughs> Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, we then have the first reading of a policy that we will be deleting, high school voter registration program. Move to approve the first reading to delete policy 5724 High School Voter Registration Program. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Motion carried. Um, and then we have a new policy for district sponsored clubs and activities. Move to approve first reading of policy 2430 District Sponsored Clubs and Activities. Second. Questions or discussion on that one? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, then we will move to the support staff compensation. No, no, it Okay, now this printed again without an item. That is so weird. Okay. Weighted grades. Will uh, Mr. Barry reporting on that or Mr. Lutke? 
I'll start and chime in. Uh, we had a committee formed of all the department heads, Mr. Fair, Ms. Malkar, and myself. We met on four occasions. We discussed uh, various things, you know, pros and cons. We also checked out with 13 different schools. We found six had weighted grades, seven did not. Uh, some had multiple tiered systems of a 5.0 system, 6.0 system, 7.0 system. They also had some courses that could be five or some in six. Uh, we decided to keep it. Then we sat down, we went over the pros and cons, and we came up with our list. And our recommendation is that we do go with a weighted system in the future, but we don't want to start with the juniors and seniors. We want to start with the class of 2022 because we don't want to change the, the concept the hard part way through their high school career. Uh, we'd like to start simple with a 5.0 scale with no tiered classes. Uh, we want every department um, offering something. Uh, so a weighted class for an A would be valued at a 5.0. Uh, the athletic code would have to be adjusted as well to reflect that they have weighted classes. And we want to review it at the end of each school year then and see if it's on task or if we need to change it from there. Uh, Mr. Berry, you want to add more? Um, yeah, then I followed up by working with all the departments so we could uh, include the honors curriculum that was really taking place in each subject area. Those courses that are um, deemed by our staff as, as a rigorous expectation that students should um, seek to obtain or push themselves to obtain. And that's how we've generated the list of those courses that would be uh, considered honors. Is class of 22 the current freshman class? Yes. Correct. The next year's sophomores. Next year's sophomores. Right. I did a little research just for my own benefit, which I'm happy to share. Um, I contacted Brent Lubo from Scholarships Incorporated. He's the executive director there. I think you had mentioned at a previous meeting we get a significant amount of money from Scholarships Incorporated. And I wanted to just get his input on how they handled uh, weighted grading. He said the majority of high schools in Brown and Door County, which Scholarships Inc. serves, uh, use a traditional scale, which we currently have now. Several do use a weighted scale. However, in those instances, we do ask the counselors to provide an unweighted GPA, and that is the GPA we use for evaluating our applicants. A few schools that have switched to a weighted GPA also list the unweighted equivalent right on the student's transcript. This is helpful as we do not have to request the counselors to do that individually. So that was his take on it. And then one of the Gibraltar board members had mentioned to me that Gibraltar is going away from weighted grades now. And I checked with Tina Van Muir and she had the uh, principal send me uh, some information on that. They are going to a Laude system, which is similar to a college system, where they will be awarding summa cum laudes to 3.9 to 4.0, magna cum laudes to 3.7, 3.899, and cum laude to 3.5 to 3.699. He said that we noticed many top students were overloading themselves with weighted classes, adding considerable stress when they take five plus AP courses. As a result, we saw students taking classes because they felt they needed to compete for the top spots under the old system of valedictorian salutatory and the top 20% honors. In our opinion, this led to students taking courses for the wrong reasons. Additionally, our weighting system did not offer weighted courses for all types of courses and seemed to be out of balance. Uh, tech ed, music, art are some examples he cited. Also, when colleges are reviewing applications, they unweight the grades when considering students for admission. I did contact UW-Madison admissions office and spoke to an admissions counselor there. She said they give no preference to weighted grades. They don't unweight them. Instead, they look at a holistic approach of the student, the rigor the student has taken, the co-curriculars and uh, volunteer opportunities, and particularly the rigor of the coursework. And she said, if you go to a weighted graded system, then you need to be sure to include a school profile with 
the transcripts of the students so that they understand the whole system and how it works together. And this really relates to Redefining Ready, which CESA is doing now to show the profile of your school, how many AP classes are taken, what ACT scores are for your district, all those kinds of things. So I did uh, make some copies of this. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, it uh, of both the uh, examples from Scholarship Inc. as well as Gibraltar. Is Gibraltar not a student of the Velvet Triumph? They're going away from it. So I don't they, know they about do, this year. They, 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 right, they had them on the radio, on the, radio the other day. Yeah. So but, what I was wondering about the scholarship for Velvet Triumph. <coughs> well, it just closed the highest GPA. Well, they're going away from we were trying to balance according to their principles. And that's uh, all colleges have been looking into that too. When they unweight the grades, the reality is they look at the curriculum because not you know that's us. So that's where it matters for our kids. But the rigor, right? The rigor, right? But um, class standing and the way the school functions right now—that's not what we do. We look at a number, and that's how it's evaluated. And then there's some of the other discussion was incentives. So these are valid points. I think they're good to have. But I like the fact that uh, well, every year you look at it and see what the outcomes are. Because even without it, then people are taking the wrong classes on a 4.0 scale. They take the easier grade to get the A. And that's not the right reason either. So you could argue they're taking classes for the wrong reason, no matter what we call them. We could call them alphabet soup. But kids will always take classes for what they think is important. And one parent might think it's not for the right reason. So I mean, I, I, this is good research. I think it'll help. help we did them. talk about Magnum Cum Laude system, mm -hmm. um, and then we said, "Well, that's a different discussion than weighted grades, because that's a that's a classification compared to mm -hmm. weighting club grades." So we stayed stuck to the course of weighted grades, and Magnum Cum Laude could be the next thing we can study. Mm -hmm. We're just like my high school was honors, high honors, highest honors. You know, well, and I, I would and think we have that, it. and we have that in the program for graduation mm -hmm. honors. So. And I might challenge, uh, like I, I like that you did have tech ed in here, right? And there might be some other areas in time that we could find. You know, you got welders that can weld underwater. I'm not proposing we have that class, but in every area there is advanced skill sets, and so that's the other thing that can be looked at in time because we don't change a curriculum overnight. But if, if you know, those are some of the things every year you could look at. Um, you know, whatever the area. And it also gives every you know, student an opportunity you know, to earn that kind of. We have chefs well. that go to you know high caliber schools, so even in the face. I mean, there's a lot of programs you can look into, um, depending on what your priorities and motivations and drives are. All right, so I think that's what uh, we looked at past schools and before. Currently, this group has looked at it, and and now you bring in some more information from some of the other schools. That's good. Was there strong support from the teachers for the weed degree? At the first meeting, no, and then after, because, well, the discussion was we don't need them or we don't ever have them, and then we went back and forth, and, and we had pros and cons, and we contacted the 13 other schools and said, well, half do, half don't, and through the discussion, we got to the point where we said, here's a recommendation, so it was department heads, and it was Melcourt, and Mr. Bear and myself, so, yeah. It was good debate. Any other questions? There a motion? We'll, we'll make a motion to approve the weighted grades program as presented. Second. First questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Two, Two nays, Jean. Then we will move on to um, the support staff compensation model. Uh, the recommendation is for the support staff to receive the 2.44% increase. Um, there was discussion at meet and confer about having more categories added from six months to 18 months. You're, you're going to raise after six months and after 18 months. 
the discussion was that at 18 months, you've been there less than two years, and you're at the same rate as someone who's been in the district 20 years. So May 30th, the support staff compensation committee is going to get back together, and we're going to do some math to figure out where that is, because my concern is changing it for those people that are between months one and 17. You can't change it for them along the way, because they've been looking down the road of what they're, where they're going to be at. And so we got to come up with a, with a model for that. But for right now, and they do 2.44, so the aides before they go home for summer can have their assignment and know where they're at. And we can always adjust it going forward if we can come up with a model that works. But I don't want to end up with a salary ladder like the teachers had where the ladder was broken and it took us two and a half years to get it straightened out again. So we've got to make sure it's equitable. Uh, and just a couple other things that the compensation staff uh, for support is going to work on that night as well. It's going to be a lot of math because one of the things that meet and confer was paying out sick days upon leaving the district and a dollar amount per day wasn't discussed and how much that would be and how much it would cost me to the district. So May 30th we're going to do some math. So for the, this time I'd like to see the 2.44 like the rest of the staff received be given to the support staff compensation. Can we make a motion to uh, approve 24% increase for support staff? Second. <coughs> Any questions or discussion? Did you get that motion, Jean? Yep. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, then we have the staff leave request in your packet from Danielle Hansen, the speech language pathologist. Danielle currently is a full-time employee. She just had, as the letter states, uh, her fourth child. She would like to be able to stay home one day per week. Um, moving forward, Ms. Margraf and I met via phone with her about that. We'll make sure our kids are covered. Last year, we increased our aid time for that area by 20 hours, 20 hours per week. And currently now with Danielle out on maternity leave, we have three days a week. So, so speech therapist here? We do. Certified speech therapist three right. days a week. And then for two other half days, we have aid support. Right. Mm -hmm. So then, and Danielle, before she left, she got her IEPs completed and that work done. So she's requesting to be 80% next year. Um, our concern is making sure that the kids get the services they need. Danielle knows her workload best. She thinks she can manage that, but I also don't want her then on the fifth day doing all the paperwork at home with her IEPs and such. So I recommend we try it and we reevaluate how that's going. Speech pathologists are extremely hard to find in the state. Um, I don't care what corner of the state you're in, they're hard to find. So then her compensation would be reduced. Yeah, be, yeah right. And but, her uh, benefits. We issued her a contract by May 15th as required, and if this was approved, then we'd issue her a new contract based off of the motion, right? But she's got to let us know how it's how the work flows to up because we yeah, work with her pretty done. closely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and every year her workload fluctuates depending right. on the kids that and it's bigger graduate out of speech or not. Last year, we just mm -hmm. did some of the numbers. Right. Is there a, is there a forecast for next year? For All right. mm -hmm. And is it busier next year? It's 40, yeah. Up by a couple. But it always, I mean, it's going up. So I've reached out to other speech and language pathologists in the area and asked if they might be interested. You know, just, you know, we're very fortunate. To, uh, you know, so. Um, one had declined, but there's another one that's waiting to get back to me too. So when I hear of people who are certified to do that, I'm definitely 100% reaching out to see their interest level and for them to know that there's a need at Sevastopol. Is there a motion? Sure, we, <coughs> what are we approving it? It's not a s is it a leave, leave request? Is no, leave? no, she's requesting to be reduced, reduced. to 80 percent. Okay, so yeah. I, I move to approve the request of Danielle Hansen to be reduced to 80 percent. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. 
Scott Walker has been coaching football here, assistant coach since 1991, and he's resigning. <coughs> I'd just like to say a few words. I've known Scott and coached with Scott. Um, and he's, a, he's, he's helped us with a lot of transitions in our football program. Um, I first started coaching with Scott when we had a combined program between Gibraltar and Sebastopol. And then Scott stepped forward and was a big part of the process of bringing football back to just Sebastopol exclusively. And then Scott actually left and, and coached at another school or stopped coaching for a few years. But then when we made the transition to eight man football, he was a big part of that sharing transition as well. So he's been an, a, a, a big part of uh, our school's transition. And, and this year, of course, the success that we have had. And I know our students really appreciate him uh, on the field. He's not completely leaving the program, it's just uh, responsibilities have changed. We'll still see him. We'll still be in the booth. Is there a motion to approve Scott's resignation, to accept Scott's resignation? I'll move to uh, accept the resignation of Scott Walker as a high school assistant football coach. Second. Questions or discussion? Well, all that I didn't think, you know, so with mm -hmm. all that background information, we should really think of as a district for everything. Mm -hmm. And thank him for his service. His name needs to go on the longevity platform to call, <laughs> along with Rod Franks. <laughs> we'll work on that. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Um, our next regular school board meeting is June 20th. Um, we will have middle school graduation sometime in that first part of June and then high school graduation on June 2nd and I'll be sending you all a message to see who would be attending those um, events. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We are adjourned.